If there's one thing that I love about marketing, it's that it always changes. If there's one thing I hate about marketing, it's that it always changes. And my goal when Marcel asked me to come back uh, and, and speak to this amazing community, which I do very much appreciate uh, you having me here, if, there, if there's one thing I, that I felt like I could give to you in the time that I had, it's to break down some of the changes that I see occurring in marketing over the next year, year, year and a half in the future. Over the next 12 to 18 months, what are the changes that I believe are gonna impact all of us as marketers? And then more importantly, what should you do about it? It's one thing to read about marketing trends. Have any of you read any articles about marketing trends? Oh, there's, here's some trends, some changes that are happening in marketing. You find out, oh, this is gonna happen, this big trend, this change is occurring in marketing. And you're like, great, what do I do about it? Have you, have you ever felt like you, you read something like, okay, that changed growing, but what do I do about it? So I want to talk about what I believe is, is changing in digital marketing. More importantly, I want to tell you what to do about it. I'm going to give you three things that we're doing in 2023 and beyond across all of our different portfolio companies. We're really privileged at Digital Marketer. We get to see behind the scenes of a lot of different businesses. We get to talk to a lot of different marketing agencies. How many of you, just so I, I know, are, who are in the room, how many of you do marketing for your own business? So you own the company, you're the founder? Great, 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 thank you, thank you. How many of you, um, you're a marketing agency, so you primarily do marketing for others? Wonderful. So we get to talk to both, and it's great. So I want to share with you what we're doing, what we're seeing, what we're hearing. Because what I've been asking, and, and this is what I've been talking to marketers about for the last almost six months. I've been asking them two questions. Number one, which marketing tactics and channels do you believe will be more effective? What do you believe is going to be more effective over the next 12 to 18 months? Conversely, which marketing tactics and channels do you believe will become less effective? So what's going to work better? What's going to work worse? And what we found were some definite trends. So I'm going to give you the top three things that marketers like you in US, Europe, across the globe, because we are a global community, a digital marketer as well. So across the globe, what are the three tactics, channels, that marketers like you believe are going to be more effective? So number three meaning this was the third, got the third most votes, of the people that we talked to, of the marketers that we surveyed, 56% of the people we surveyed had YouTube ads as one of the things that they believe is going to be more effective in the next 12 to 18 months. Raise your hand, how many of you are doing YouTube ads right now? YouTube ads, look around, look around, look around. A lot of hands not up. I would encourage you this next year, time to start investing in YouTube ads. Everybody tends to agree it's working better and it will continue to work better. Uh, number two, this one shocked me. I was truly surprised. Number two, email. Email. Can we give a round of applause for email? Yes. Email. Come on. I love email. It's the original, right? Email is the original marketing channel. It is like the cockroach of marketing. You cannot kill it. It will not die. I have been doing marketing since 1999 online. There was barely an internet in 1999. But do you know what we had? Email. And since 1999, they've been predicting the death of email. It will not die. And now marketers are starting to figure out. I was shocked when I saw this. 57% of marketers said email is going to work better. And I believe this is true because it is the one channel that you get to own as marketers. We're seeing across the board marketing channels through privacy changes, marketing channels being taken away from us, the ability to target being pulled away from us, but email remains true. So we're going to talk about what we're doing at Digital Marketer and all of our companies to better optimize email. Number one, the number one channel or tactic that marketers like you believe will be working better 
12 to 18 months from t- than, than it does today. Does anybody want to guess what it is? Call it out. What is it? Who said TikTok? Anybody else think it's TikTok? Raise your hand if you think it's TikTok. TikTok, short form video TikTok. Okay? Basically, we're talking 91% of the marketers that we surveyed, when we asked them, what are the channels and tactics that you believe will be more effective? 91% had TikTok or short form video in their top three. So maybe it's Reels, maybe it's YouTube Shorts. Everyone across the board seems to think that this is a thing. I agree, but I think it's creating a really big challenge. As marketers, communicating value in a few seconds is hard. And it's meaning that our customers, our prospects are having commitment issues, right? What what we're now seeing is, 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 frankly, it's almost like they're dating around to a lot of different people constantly. None of our customers are wanting to commit anymore. Now, what was also mentioned, by the way, AI, artificial intelligence, copy and design was a notable mention, paid communities, influencer marketing, SMS marketing, sell by chat, all of these were mentioned as things that marketers tend to agree will be working better in 2023 than even in this last year. So there you go. These are ones worth investing in. We're going to talk a little bit what you do about it. Now let's look at the losers. You want to see the losers? Yeah, yeah it's way more fun. Who, who, what's just garbage? What's not working anymore? So number three, which is better, by the way, than being number one. This is a list where you don't want to come in first. Okay. You don't, you don't really want to be on this list at all, but you definitely don't want to be first. So number three, organic social. 34% of marketers believe, which isn't too bad, 34% believe that organic social, organic reach on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, they tend to believe that it's going to be harder, not as effective as it was last year. Does that make sense? Everybody kind of agree? It's getting harder. It's getting harder. The algorithms are beginning to lock down. So that number two is organic. So um, number three. Let's look at number two. We're broadly categorizing this as one-touch conversions. In other words, somebody seeing an ad, clicking on an ad, going to a landing page, and buying something. What we're finding is that sales cycles are getting longer. Prospects are taking, taking longer and longer to make a decision. So in general, the ability to monetize our, our advertising, it's taking longer and it's, it's costing us more. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, we have figured out a new funnel at, at our companies that is working really, really well to take advantage, uh, to, to compensate for this. Number one, what do you think number one is? The trend, the, the channel, the, ta- the marketing tactic that is gonna be, that's less effective now and will be in the future than it was in the past. What is it? If TikTok was number one for the good, What's number one for the bad? Facebook. Facebook. Oh my gosh, yes. You guys hate Facebook. You are so mad at Facebook. You are very, very angry at Facebook and Instagram. We saw this all over the place. Everybody universally agreed like Facebook doesn't work anywhere near like it used to. Does everybody generally resonate with that? Does everybody agree Facebook? We kind of, they, they, we don't like them as much. Yeah, okay. Some other not so notable mentions, Facebook groups, uh, chatbots, people, I think, <laughs> marketers did to chatbots what marketers always do, which is we ruined it, right? They still work. They could still be really effective. We're going to talk about actually a chat strategy that we're leveraging via email that's effective. So we talked about the, the things that, that everybody believes are going to work better. We talked about the things that everybody believes uh, is going to work not as well. What does this mean, though? I want to give you three trends, okay? Three trends, three themes that I want you to remember as you're building out your marketing campaign and your strategy going into 2023. The first big trend is that what we're calling subsidized CAC. CAC is customer acquisition cost. The cost to acquire a customer. That's CAC. Subsidized CAC is dead. What do I mean by that? It's easier to explain if I use an analogy that's not marketing related. Um, you all have Uber here, I suppose, right? There's Uber, car sharing. You don't have ride sharing, no Uber here? What's a ride sharing s- service that you have here? You do have Uber. 
okay, why are you saying no? I got, I got a guy in the second row being like, we've never heard of Uber in Germany. There is no Uber in Germany. Everybody disagrees with you. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's an app. If you go on, you might be able to find it on your phone. No. So maybe, what about Lime? Do you have Lime scooters? Yeah, okay. I know you have those because I wrote them. Um, so Uber, at least in the States, I had a lot of friends who lived in larger cities and they didn't buy a car, which in the States is weird. In Europe, plenty of people don't own cars. In the States, if you don't own a car, that's weird. You're a weirdo, okay? And they didn't own a car, but it was actually less expensive for them to just Uber wherever they wanted to go. It was cheap. Ubers were less than taxis. You could get wherever you wanted to go, pull it up, and it was less expensive. Not anymore. Uber, now, in the States and everywhere else, all the people I'm talking to is now more expensive. Why? Because prior to this year, Uber and most of the other big startups, most of the other big companies, they were running on a growth at all cost strategy. Grow. That was all the, the stock market, it was all their investors wanted to see. Grow. We just want to see growth. We want to see new users. We want to see new customers. Grow, grow, grow. It's all we care about. Is that all the market cares about today? As we shift into maybe a recessionary type environment? No. What they want to see now is profit. Profit. And so all of these companies that were willing to subsidize, they were willing to basically lose money to acquire a customer. They were willing to lose money to acquire a user. Now, no more. Now, I talked about Uber as being an example, but also in that group, Facebook. Facebook, for the past 15 years almost, Facebook, Google, 10 to 15 years, has been charging less for a click than they could get. They've been charging less for a click than what they could actually get. Why? Because they wanted to get us. They wanted to get all the marketers. They wanted to get us on their platform using it. And guess what? It worked. We're all there. Raise your hand if you, if you are mad at Facebook, pissed off at Instagram, you don't, you don't like that it doesn't work as well. Come on, be honest. We're marketers here. Come on. But you're still using it, aren't you? Yep. We don't like them, but we're still using it. We asked all these marketers, num number one, you all said Facebook, and yet you still use it which means they can charge whatever they want and we're still going to pay. Subsidized CAC is dead. We can no longer count on these big companies subsidizing our customer acquisition costs. Trend number two, content binging. Content binging is creating commitment issues. Do you all remember blogs? Do you remember blogs, online articles? Do you remember when you used to go to the internet and you would read words? No one does that anymore, right? It used to be that you would write content, people would find your website, and they would read the page. It could be 3,000 words and they would read it. We don't do that anymore. What do we do? We watch a short video, scroll up, scroll up, scroll up, scroll up, right? Short form video is all the rage, but it is absolutely creating commitment issues. It's like there's a hookup culture kind of thing going on with your prospects. They're not committed to you and your brand anymore because they're just one little scroll up to more and more entertainment. So how do we overcome this? I believe that this trend and solving for this challenge is the number one opportunity for marketers today. How do we get these users from TikTok to, an e to, a, to a channel that we can control, namely email. As marketers, this is the challenge I want you to think about solving. How do I get a TikTok viewer to go from a TikTok video to my email list? Because I'm seeing marketers brag about getting a million, two million, 10 million views on TikTok. Guess what? It's gone, forgotten. The next video in line gets the next 10 million. You got nothing except to be able to tell people that you got a lot of views. Trend number three, sales cycles are expanding. As people become more concerned about the economy, they're not spending, it's not that they're spending less, they're still spending. 
It's that they're taking longer to make a decision. And, and instead of kind of spreading it around multiple brands, they're taking a long time to make a decision and they're going all in. We're seeing consolidation occur. This is good if you're the brand that everybody picks. I'm going to say that again. This is really important. Consolidation, which is what occurs in tougher economic times, is good if you're the number one or the number two brand. You will come out of this with more customers. You will come out of this with a bigger brand. It's really bad if you're number three, four, or five. You will come out of this probably done. Okay? So sales cycles are expanding. How do we capture more of that value earlier? I'm going to talk about how we do that in just a second. So let's get into that. Let's get into what we're doing. I gave you three trends. I want to give you three things that you can do in 2023 and that we're doing in 2023 to take advantage of some of these opportunities. Number one, we're flipping the funnel. Okay? Number one, flip the funnel. You got to flip the funnel. What do I mean by flip the funnel? Historically, this is how marketing has worked and this is what I've taught. Everything that I have taught for the last 10 years at Digital Marketer was basically saying, here's what you do, marketers. You want to bring somebody in on a free offer. Zero dollar. Have them opt in for a lead magnet. Have them opt in for a free course. Give them something for free of value, that is of value. Then, slowly and steadily walk them up the value ladder in a linear fashion. Start free, then go low cost, then a little bit higher, then eventually your big ticket. The analogy that I used was one of dating and relationships. Right? Hey, can I buy you coffee? Hey, let's go out to dinner. Hey, let's date exclusively. Hey, let's get married. That was the analogy that I used. And my, what I said, I, I was very clear on this, marketers, never propose marriage on a first date. Right? If you've heard me speak, if you've seen any of my videos, I was big on that. Never propose marriage on a first date. Never propose marriage on a first date. Never propose marriage on a first date. I'm here to tell you that, 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 that I've changed. Propose marriage on a first date. <laughs> yep, it's time. It's time. Here's what we're doing now. Hi, nice to meet you. Want to get married? <laughs> no? Well, can I buy you dinner? <laughs> yeah. Now, I still don't love this. I still think it is better to romance your prospects. Okay? I still think it's better to date your prospects. I'm simply saying we can't afford to do it anymore. The traffic costs are too high because the cost of customer acquisition is no longer subsidized. Whether it's iOS 14 or whatever, a click just costs more, period. And it'll always cost more. Whatever it costs you today, that is the lowest you will ever pay for a click in the rest of your career. And it has now reached a point where we simply can't afford to wait unless you're a big funded company. We got to go for it. We got to go for it. Do any of you have any like older grandparents where maybe like, maybe like grandpa died, but like grandma's kind of like still thinking that maybe she wants to get married, right? Old people don't take a really long time to date. They don't have time. Old people meet somebody, they're like, hi, nice to meet you. We should get married now, right? That's us now, okay? We're the old people in a nursing home who just need to propose marriage. That, that is us right now. But we need to find a way to do it the right way. Because there is risk. Just like in dating, if you propose marriage on a first date, you will get slapped by some people. If you come out with your highest ticket offer, right, there's a good chance that some people who would have said yes will say no. Sometimes it does hurt to ask. Have you heard the expression, it never hurts to ask? Is that an expression? Over here? Yeah. How many, raise your hand and help me out if you've heard the expression, it never hurts to ask? Yes, it does. Sometimes it hurts to ask. Sometimes you ask for too much too soon. So how do we find that balance? What is that balance? The answer is when you start selling in private. So shift number two, shift from selling outwardly to everybody all the time. Shift from the big 
outward sales channels to doing more high ticket selling in private. Let me show you how we're doing this. At any given, you might want to draw this out, by the way. If you're taking notes, draw, draw a triangle. At any given time in your market, there are three groups of people. I don't care what you're selling. At any given time in your market, there's three groups of people. There are people at the very, very top. There are people at the very, very bottom. The people at the very, very bottom, these are people who will never buy from you. They will never buy from you. No matter what you do, they will never buy from you. They clicked on your ad. They signed up for your email list. It doesn't matter. They will never buy from you. Now, thankfully, this group is relatively small. Now, and then there's people who are ready. Uh, they will buy later, which is the largest group. And then there's people who are ready to buy now. So what do you have? You have now people. You have later people. You have never people. Which group is the biggest? Later. Later is the biggest group on your list at any given time. And here's the problem with later people. They look a whole lot like the never, and they look a whole lot like the now. 